Alrighty, welcome everyone to day 16 of Advent Decode. Last night was my night off to not stay up till midnight, 1, 2 a.m. doing these problems, finishing me up for YouTube, so now you get me early in the morning. Hopefully it doesn't affect my ability to kind of think straight as it is early in the morning for me. But either way, day 16, question's already up because, of course, it's in the morning, so we can just go ahead and get started. All right, as you walk yet, or as you're walking to yet another connecting flight, you realize that one of your the legs of the Urata trip coming up is on a high-speed train. However, the train ticket you were given is in the language you don't understand. You should probably figure it out what it says before you get on the train. Um, unfortunately, you cannot read the words on the ticket. You can, however, read the numbers so you can figure out the fields the tickets must have and valid ranges. If valid, is okay. You collect the you collect the rules for the. Ticket fields, the numbers and your tickets, and the numbers and the nearby tickets for the same train service uh, together in a single document and reference your puzzle input. The rules for the ticket fields specify a list of fields that exist somewhere on the ticket in the valid ranges of values. For each field, the example, for example, rule like class 1, 3, or 5, 7 means that one of the fields in every ticket is named class and that it has a value in the ranges 1, 3, K, inclusive, good. The tickets are represented by a single line of comma-separated values, the values of each of the numbers of the tickets in order for they appear. Your ticket has the same format. For example, let's just uh, consider this ticket, okay? Um, here, your question mark represents the uh, represents text and language you don't understand. This ticket might be represented as 101, 102, 103K, of course. Uh, the actual train tickets you're looking for are much more complicated. In any case, you extracted just the number in such a way that the first number is always the same specific field. The second number is always a, so it's a different specific field, and so on. You just don't know. You just don't know what each position actually means. Okay, so they're all the same. Okay. Um, start by determining the tickets are complete. Which tickets are completely invalid? These are tickets that contain values that aren't valid for any field. Ignore your ticket for now. Uh, for example, suppose the following notes K. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter which position corresponds to which field, you can identify nearby invalid nearby tickets are considered in what only whether tickets contain values that are not valid for any field. Okay. Um, ticket scanning error rate. Okay, so. Oh boy. Uh, fun. So let's dump this into day 16. Uh, yay. So, to get this input, we need to first parse it into as until we read a blank line, then again, and then a blank line. Okay. So, how do we want to do this? So, we have to go through, read these rules in. Um, they all have one or, so they are going to have two ranges for each value, which is good because now we can actually simplify this to just have the two ranges. Makes our life much easier. Um, okay. Alright, so we're going to first start with a uh, string here, s, and we're going to read it for input strings. We're going to need int... Um, Input stage, we're gonna start at zero. With this input stage, you can determine whether or not we are in this part, are reading our ticket in or reading the nearby tickets in. So uh, let's do that. Um, so for stage zero, whoops, I keep doing this instead of this. Um, so quickly, if input stage equals zero, um, actually we need first check if s dots trim dot is empty if it is empty we simply just do input stage plus plus and continue otherwise if the input stage is zero we need to read this in so we're going to need to split on this okay so let's go ahead and just do this again parts and this is going to be equal to the input, input, or s actually, and we're going to split on that to make our life easier. And now, for now we don't, I mean, let's make a class actually, we can do this. Uh, private static class, and this is going to be uh, input field, 
And what this is gonna hold is gonna hold a string um, name, I guess, or string text. Um, it's going to hold public int min one, uh, public int max one, and then it's gonna hold a min two and max two, because those are the two different ranges we'll have. Okay. So what we need to get out of this is we need to hold a list of input fields, input fields, new array list, okay. And let's go ahead and just make a constructor for this, make our life easier. Um, maybe not. No, this should be fine. So we can just do input field, input field, and at the very end, input fields. We can go ahead and add this field in, add this field in. There we go, okay. So now given parts, we can just go ahead and just do field dot, um, text is gonna be equal to parts uh, zero. That one's easy to do. Now the next part we need to split on the orbit here, and then we need to then split min and max into these bits, okay. So let's go ahead and do string ranges, and it's gonna be parts one split on, is it the dash? No, not the dash, it's just on or. Okay, and then we're going to do for uh, string range and ranges and ranges here. So we're going to get both of them. I mean, this is just making it easier to, be able to do the same logic twice in a row. We can just do it once with our for loop here. Uh, so it's going to run twice, and we're going to do is we're going to do um, again one more parse, and it's going to be range trim split on the dash, and this is going to give us the nums. And last but not least, we are going to do, oh. Uh, maybe, maybe never mind. we're not gonna do a for loop because the for loop's gonna make it a little harder for us to know which one's min one and max one. So then we're gonna do um, field min one is going to equal this is ranges zero, which starts num integer parsint on nums zero. And then, whoops, the max one is gonna be the same thing, but it's going to be on nums one. And then we're going to copy this, change it, um, change it to ranges of one, and then just do min two and max two, and now we have the fields all set up. All set up. So now that we have those set up, now all we need to do is we need to handle the other input stages. So, uh, else if um, input stage is one, uh, this is going to be our input. Um, so we need to just determine if the line is this. Um, so we're gonna do if s dots contains this, continue on, just simply skip this. Otherwise we need to do, uh, we need to do parsing of this, but I don't know if it's gonna be, it's gonna be necessary probably for the next part, so we're going to do anyways. Um, all we're gonna do is we're just going to split this into a string. Um, uh, numbers, I'm just gonna split this into a string array of numbers, and it's just gonna be on s dot split on comma, s dot trim. I like doing trim just because it makes things cleaner just on the off chance that it's not clean already. All right, so that's me done like that, but we don't need to do anything yet. This part isn't asking about that. This part is just asking about the rest of them, in which case we're going to have to skip over nearby tickets like this for if the next one, if input stage is two. Skip over that. Now we've got numbers. So now what we need to do is we need to um, use all these numbers and we need to basically check every number and make sure it falls in the range. Um, what are we asking you specifically in the question? What do we return? Uh, what is the... What is your ticket scanning error rate? Oh, what's the error rate? Um, 
The values are now into valid. Okay. Also, adding together all the invalid values produces your ticket scanning your remaining error. So we add all of the invalid values. Okay. Um. Can the uh, in this example the values values in the first nearby ticket are all valid. The value all of the invalid. Okay, so we're going to need for part one. So we're going to need up here an int error rate is going to be zero. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go through string. Um, num in numbers numbers and what we're going to do is do a for loop um we need to go well actually first first we need to convert this to a number so integer uh, let's call this number str number string num is integer parse int on num string okay so now that we have the number, now we need to go through every single input field and every single rule and check if this number is valid for any of them. As soon as it is valid, we can continue on um, with the next number. And if any of these get to a point where they are not valid, um, yeah. So we need a Boolean valid is false and what we're going to do here is if not valid we are going to do error rate plus equals number all right so now for our for loop we're going to, have to go for um input input uh field input field and input fields and all we need to do is we just need to check if input field um, min one is less than or equal to number and it is then greater than or equal to number for max one or we do the same thing but for the others uh, I mean technically and has become before ors so I don't technically need to do this but I'm going to anyways okay so there we go. Um, we can do int the other, okay. Um, and so then, if this is true, what we can just do is um, valid is true, so it fits one field, and that's all we care about, so we just do valid equals true, and we break out of this. And now, if we run this, we should get our error rate if I were to have outputted it. Um, While well, that's trying to do that. Um, we can call lap and with error rates. All right, so run this again. Let's get our error rates and let's plug this in and hope it's correct. Hey, it is right. Nice. On to part two. For part two, now that you've identified which tickets contain invalid values, discard those tickets entirely. Use the remaining valid tickets to determine which field is which. Using the valid ranges for each field. Uh, what order the fields appear on the ticket? The order is consistent between all the tickets. If your seat, if your seat is the third field, that third value is for every ticket, including your ticket. Okay. So now that we've done that, so our first step is to discard this. So, um, so now we've got to here. So now we need to discard this number out of the tickets. Um, which means that we need a larger list here of, I can do an int array is what I can do, maybe not. Um, so, So we know which we know which ones are not valid. So valid uh, 
needs to be moved out here. Everyone starts... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Wait, these are numbers as a part of each line. So, well, yes. All right, so as soon as one is not valid, we can then also break out of here. And then what we care about is if it is valid, then we want to go ahead and add it in. I still have a string value. I mean, it's uh, I, I can parse it again, but we're just going to hold it here. Um, and these are going to be valid tickets like this. And then what we're going to do here is if it is valid, valid tickets, add, um, we're going to add numbers. Again, it could be a bit better, but uh, it's fine. Okay, so now we need, so now we have our input field. Um, um, once you've look at the six fields on your ticket and start with the word departure, what is, what do you give you to recommend to apply these six values together? So we want to multiply these values together, okay. So we are going to need to actually store our ticket. So when we get to here, we're just going to store this up here. So this is going to be um, our ticket. And all we're going to do with this is when we get to it, we're just going to store this in our tickets, make our life easier for later. Okay. So now that we've gone through this whole parsing, we have our valid tickets. Now what we need to do down here after part one is to go through and determine which fields go with which values. Um, so what we can do, I guess, is we can hold a two dimensional array with one dimension being these value and these indexes, I guess we can call them. Um, and the other being the indexes in these tickets and what they can or cannot map to. So that is how I'm going to do it. Basically, if you're familiar with the puzzle, I forget the puzzle name. I'll try and put a picture here of what the puzzle I'm thinking is, but this is what I am basically doing is mimicking this puzzle in code to where you just have the columns. You got to figure out where the columns and rows can possibly match. Um, it's like a math logic puzzle type thing. I remember it from when I was younger. Anyways, so well, we're gonna go down here. So we're gonna first create, um, it's going to just be a Boolean. Um, it's gonna be a two dimensional Boolean array. Um, and these are going to be um, matches or possible matches. Um, I, uh, so the default for a Boolean in Java is false. That's one problem. So we're going to need to go through and make these true by default, um, because that's where they are all possible. Um, or wait, we, could we start as false? Maybe we could start as false. Actually, we might be fine to start there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the outer be um, the input stages here, or the input fields dot length. And then we're going to make the inner bits here be uh, our ticket dot length. Um, no, it needs to be initialized to that, right? Okay. All right. So now that we're given this, now we're going to have to do a for loop for all of the input fields. Uh, no, not input fields. Um, for all of the um string arrays of the valid tickets, we need to go through each one of these, and we need to figure out where these can possibly match up. Um. These might be backwards because we're going to want to do. No, it's fine. Um, but we're going to move this inside here. So we're going to do for. Um... Oh, no, no, no. This is fine. Sorry. This is fine. No, 
No, this is not our ticket. This is going to be, sorry, valid tickets at length. Sorry. So we do need this, and then we're going to need int i equals zero, i is less than valid tickets dot size i plus plus. So this is how we're going to be able to get this index here. Um, and then just uh, dot get i. Okay. So now we have this, and now we need to go through each of these valid tickets, and we're going to need to mark. Um, Wait, is this how I want to do it? Wait, wait. I gotta think about this. So the, the input fields is right. That's right. Um, input fields is right. And then what we need to do is we need to map, not this. So no, I was right with this being our, um, our ticket. Goes down. Um, right. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, we're finding which of these is possibly valid. Okay. Yeah. So then valid ticket. Okay. Um, again, this probably needs to actually be. Let's make this int j equals zero while j is less than um, j plus plus. Okay. And so we actually just skip the step. We can just do int num uh, int integer parse int on this. Okay, and do that. And then what we can go ahead and do, so we have this number now. Now we need to test this number against each field. Um, and then we need to set the corresponding um, I value. So I need to do for int k, um, while well, k is less than input fields size k plus plus um sorry k equals zero so we're going to, have to do possible matches of k is the input field so k given the field in our ticket we are testing which is j we need to set this equal to this if statement here Um, so we do need the input field of K. Oh, is it get K? Sorry, get K. And then we just check whether or not this number falls inside this range. Um, yep. And then we get the very, very end. So we actually, this can be a enhanced for the, the very top. And then when we get the very end, we should get only one field per that's valid, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So we're gonna do then, um, I'm going to do a, a for loops here. Um, Cause I just, I need to check if this is actually what I think it's going to give me. Um, so this is going to be then possible matches. Um, possible matches J length. And I need, I just need to visually see to make sure this is giving me what I want it to be. So then let's just do a nice system out print line or not print line print here of possible matches of k and j um and these are all gonna be ones or zeros um and then print line maybe let's just i'm just let's see what happens i don't know oh it's gonna give me true okay um 
I guess we need to add some space. I thought it was going to give me like a 1 or a 0, but... Okay. So clearly it did not work. Um, so clearly it did not work. So do we only, we only want to be setting these, I guess, if they are false. So I guess we do need to go through each of these and set them equal to true. Um, to start. All right, so we do need to go through them and set each one to true by default and then make a check here to only set the field to false here. Maybe, please. And I get false for every single field. Uh, um, what, uh, let me do something here and I'll get back to this in a second. Okay, so I think I determined my error. My error is actually not my code below. My error is actually up here in this valid. Actually, there was one error and that was the fact I was getting uh, only zero here. That was one of the issues, but the real issue is I believe this valid tickets is not um, excluding things. Um, so I'm gonna guess if I do a system, I keep system out print line here, uh, val tickets dot size. I'm probably gonna get the exact same 236 that is in my input, um, or about there. Um, yeah, so uh, 236. Um, just about. So that's where my issue is now. Why am I my this, so this valid must not be working? Um, although I'm getting a different answer on part one now. So this valid does need to be inside here. And if it's not valid, we break out of this for loop. So I guess I need a Boolean add here. I mean, this should be... This and the add should have been the same as what valid was. That looks more right, and we get three, two, we get our original answer, right? Okay, so that's fixed. So now with that fixed, I have uh, some code up here that's doing a break statement, I'm trying to test things out. Um, so now I should get a much more correct one of these. Okay, so this is what our ending grid looks like. And now from this, what I need to do is I need to go through each of these and I need to determine which of them I can do. So like in this case here, this one is only one there, so that makes these all zeros. I need to keep doing that until I find the one I'm after. Um, oh boy. So let's do it this way. We might have to keep kind of re reversing this um, to just kind of keep cleaning it up. So we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna just copy this because we're gonna just do this after. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go through each of these. We're gonna go for each row on this. We're going to try and find things like this where they can only map to one thing. Um, so we're going to do boolean, um, we're going to do int count equals zero, and then we're just going to do a check here if, um, 
matches JK. Oh. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, that should be just zero. Technically, that's wrong, that should be zero, but. Uh, let's just do it this way. That's that's gonna confuse me if I do it like that. Technically, it's a square grid. It doesn't matter. That's why I can do this. It, it is a, technically a square grid. Um, so if this is true, we just do count count plus plus, and we're gonna do down here is if count equals one, we're going to go through this vertically and we're going to do possible mappings um i let's make this i yeah so we're gonna go through this vertically and we're gonna have to make a check sh to make sure that if i does not equal j we set this to be Um, oh. Um. So we need to also hold the, the index it was at. So this is going to be the last index it found it at. Um, so then we're going to use index for this, and then we're going to use i for here, and we're going to set this equal to false. And hopefully. Hopefully, after running this once, we should see a slight change in how this looks. Which we do. Okay. So now we just need to keep running this until we find uh, an even grid of these. Um... So we're going to need to move this into like a step. I'm going to give it uh, the Boolean array. So this is just whittling down. I don't know if there's a better way to do this or whatnot, but this is just the way I can think of. And we're going to have to do this for both directions. Um, so this, by both directions, I mean you're just going to have to flip these around to be J and then K. So which is... Still... Um, so if you want to flip these all around, so it's going to be J and K, which means that this is J. Means this is K. Uh oh. Um, which means that this is then I and this is index. Maybe. Uh, let me comment this out. Let me just do a step. Let's do one step here just to make sure that this works. It does. So it did that line. Okay, so I spent a while just trying to figure this out. I think I was just over psyching myself out. I think it actually was, for the most part, working. I just didn't kind of realize that. So I actually just kept going. I added one more method here. This is an is done check. All I do is I just go through all of the values. So I guess I go through all of the, um, uh, the columns, I think. Either way, I go through all of them. Or no, actually, I go through all the each row and I check all the columns. Basically, I only check one direction to make sure that there's only one Boolean in there, that's true. Um, because in, if this works, it should only matter one way because the other way should also be worked out based upon that. So, after I did this is done method, we just add a while loop and made this, and move the logic to reduce the rows and columns down into a step um, method. And so now we just put that step method in this while loop that we go until it's not done. And then once it's done, we just output it, which we get this. 
So now we should have the mappings for each input to where they go on the matches. So all that's left is actually to do what it's asking for us for part two, which is to, um, we need to multiply the six values of departure. And the six values of departure are the first six in here, right? One, two, yeah. So we need to multiply these six values of our ticket. So that means what we need to do is we have these possible matches. So now we have the Boolean. So now we just need to figure out where those four values match um, in our input. So given that in this case, the columns here are the, um, what the input fields are, we need to know which these first six map to in um, that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to keep this for loop here. Um, so we're gonna use this as the column. So we're actually gonna go for only the first six um and then we need to do uh let's just make a quick uh int up here so these are going to be the um values um that we're going to multiply together so it's only going to be a size of six and we're going to do is going to do for int k equals zero while k is zero not oh zero while our k is less than the input uh the possible matches Length against the square, so it doesn't really matter what um, k plus plus. Okay, and all we're going to do here is we're going to do a check if possible matches its row column, so it's going to be um, k j. It's kind of backwards. It's it, this is what took me the longest was to make sure I was doing these correctly for the k's and j's. That's what took the longest. And so in this case, what we're going to do is if that's true, we're simply going to set values of j equal to our index which is k and then we can actually just break out of this go to the next one and then at the very end all we care about here is doing a lap of values now contains our indexes for each of these so we actually let's just do a um, int or a long answer equals zero um wait is it What's the, it's asking for, we multiply the six values together. Um, so answer is gonna start, oh, how do I wanna do this? So we have the values, so these are the indexes that they're at. So we'll, given this index, we can actually just do this this way. We can do um, our input, cause it's gonna be our ticket at K, and we can just go integer parse this. Um, and actually we can just do the multiplication here. So we can just do long answer. Long answer. We're gonna start at one, that way the multiplication of the first step works. And then we can just do answer multiplies equals. And then hopefully when we lap this, not delete everything, hopefully when we lap this with this answer, we get the correct answer. Hey, we did it! <laughs> that was a little, it did, the number looked a bit off, but anyways. Wow, okay, this list took me a while, and I think it it probably get, let's get condensed um, pretty well in the video. So, yeah, I, I think it was working. I think I was just psyching myself out for the longest time on that it was working, but anyways. So, to explain what we've done, so for input base, uh, let's go back to the problem for our input for day 16. Basically, we are given these tickets with unknown keys in these tickets or unknown text of what these numbers mean, but each key has a number and we can read those numbers. So what we have to do is given the rules for what each field could be, we need to figure out which, which field in the ticket maps to each field of the possibilities. Now we don't know, again, the, the mappings here, but we have everyone's ticket. So if you combine everyone's ticket together, in theory, we should be able to figure out what fields can and can't map to each value. And from the process of elimination and doing math there, we should be able to figure that out. So for the first part though, it's just asking how many tickets in our input are invalid. And to do that, all we do is we have to, after we parse everything and read it in, all we have to do is we just have to check the min and maxes of the two uh, ranges 
and if the number falls within those, we're good. However, if that number does not fall within either min or max, we know that that ticket is invalid. Uh, this is this is across all of the possible inputs. Um, we know the ticket is invalid, and so in which case, if the ticket is not valid, we don't add it to our list. Um, but in this case, we also have to do this with the error rates. So we have to add it into the error rates. So that's for the answer for part one. But um, we use this for one for the error rate for part one, but also for the tickets that we deal with in part two, we add it in, do all that stuff. So that was part one. Um, the biggest thing in part one is just the parsing of everything and then checking each input field on that ticket to make sure that it fits within all of the fields and all of that. Um, yeah. So part one there for part two. Part two is where we get harder. So again, I'm using, let me look this up real quick. Okay, so I found a picture of it. I'll put the picture up on here. I don't know what these are called. I remember doing these. They're just kind of like logic puzzles with rules is what they are. Um, but basically for part two, this is kind of what I based my answer off of doing is basically because we're given rules essentially by our rules are the input fields and the, the ranges they map to and kind of using this concept of a two-dimensional array where the uh, one dimension is going to be our input values or the, the the rules of what ranges they can fit in and all that is going to be the one range and then the other domain or the y whatever you want to call it is going to be all of our possible input fields i kind of based around this but at any rate so what we do for this is that we create a dimensional boolean array we first start that boolean array with all the values of true then what we do is we loop through all of the valid tickets that we have we loop through all their values and we see where each value can or can't be uh, mapped to on the uh, input ranges. So we start, with, so we take the um, the first index, so we take uh, the valid first valid ticket, we take the first uh, number of that, and we go across all the input fields, and we see where can you map to. In any case, if we get to one where that value cannot be mapped to that, we say, all right, in this field, so for our first number of this input or this valid input on this field it cannot be uh, mapped here so we put that as false and as soon as we get one false we would never touch it again because it stays false that one ticket invalidates that input field mapping to that index of our tickets and so because all the tickets they share the same um, structure we know that we can keep this two-dimensional array and so then as we sort of build out this map, as we mark the false fields where they cannot map to, in the end we get to an almost solved grid of these, um, but we have to do a little more logic with the step function to go through, across, and vertically to see where we have columns that only have one true in them and the rest are false and rows with their only one true and the rest are false, to then kind of lock those rows in clear out the rest of the row or column to make sure that no other tickets can touch that and by the process of elimination by doing that multiple times we finally get to a point where we have just one two-dimensional array with only one boolean in each row and column that's our mappings we then can go through those we only need the for part two we only need the first six um, columns uh, which are the actual input fields we only need the first six columns of those for our ticket to know what are to get our answer. So all we do is we have to go to those first six columns, figure out the row they map to. Remember our rows in this two dimensional array are the actual ticket fields. So we get the first six columns, which are the six rows. We get those rows to get onto our ticket to figure out where those columns map to, grab those values, multiply them all together, get our answer. Hopefully this made sense. Again, I we're getting to the point where these puzzles of where I can do them, explaining them is a little bit harder for me because again, when you're struggling with them, you're going to have a harder time struggling to explain them. Anyways, that's day 16 complete. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all tonight now or slash tomorrow for day 17. Peace out.